Hello, good morning, everybody. Today, in this session, I want to discuss one of the important sonnets of William Shakespeare, sonnet number 130. William Shakespeare is a big name in English literature. As you know, he is one of the greatest dramatists of all times. Shakespeare is considered as one of the famous personalities of 16th century. Shakespeare is famous for writing great tragedies, great comedies, and at the same time, great historical plays. William Shakespeare is also famous for writing wonderful sonnets and lyrics and narrative poems. He is famous for writing 154 sonnets. He is one of the greatest sonneteers of 16th century. We have big names in 16th century, like Edmund Spencer, Philip Sidney, Marlowe. Shakespeare excelled in two important forms of literature, that is poetry and drama. I have already spoken about the importance of Shakespeare as a dramatist. His famous comedies are As You Like It, Twelfth Night. Tragedies are Hamlet, Macbeth, Othello, King Lear. And as a poet, he is remembered for his sonnets. A sonnet is a poem of 14 lines. Normally, sonnet is a love poem and it is addressed to a lover. Originally, sonnet was born in Italy and Petrarch is said to be the father of an Italian sonnet, but it was borrowed into English in 16th century. Shakespeare became the master of writing sonnets. His 154 sonnets are addressed to two important persons. One, WH, sonnet number one to 126. It is said that it is addressed to his friend, WH. And the remaining sonnets, sonnet number 127 to 154 are addressed to dark lady. The present sentence, the sonnet number 130, is a very interesting sonnet addressed to Dark Lady. Let me read the sonnet before I explain. My mistress's eyes are nothing like the sun. Coral is far more red than her lips red. If snow be white, why then her breasts are done? If hairs be wires, Black wires grow on her head. Has seen roses be must red and white, but no such roses see I in her cheeks. And in some perfumes is there more delight than in the breath that from my mistress speaks. I love to hear her speak, and well I know that music hath a far more pleasing sound. I grant I never saw a goddess girl. My mistress, when she walks, trips on the ground. And yet, by heaven, I think my love as rare, as rare as any belied with pulse compare. The sonnet is rather very unusual of Elizabethan norms. Normally, a sonnet is a love poem and the lover is always talking in high regard or high terms, talking most of the time, beautiful about his mistress. But it is something different here. Shakespeare is not describing the the wonderful beauty or the romantic beauty of his mistress. Rather, he is talking about the real beauty of his uh, mistress. And finally, 
he gives a different kind of a statement in the end of the sonnet. The end of the sonnet is couplet. Here there are three quatrains, four stanza, four line stanza, four, 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 and the last stanza is two line, that is called couplet. In the first quadrain, he says, my mistress's eyes are nothing like the sun. Normally eyes are not compared to sun. The usual you know, comparison is a star. The usual comparison is something that is shining eyes, sparkling eyes. But here the comparison is, my mistresses are nothing like the sun. Coral is far more red than her lips red. Even as far as red lips are concerned, the speaker says, Coral is far more red and her lips are not as red as that of coral. And that again, he questions the redness of her lips. Whenever we are talking about a lover describing uh, lips, he says rosy lips. But here, the words are not rosy. If a snow be white, why then her breasts are done? The poet says her breasts are dark, done, and they are not white, as white as uh, snow. Um, again, there is a reference that she is a dark lady and um, she is not white, as white as sun. And then he speaks about oh, hair, hair. If hairs be wires, black wires grow on her head. You know, he, he says that her hair are not silky hair, her hair, uh, long and silky hair, that what we see in the, the description of uh, John Keats in La Balade in Saints Mercy. But here he says it's very quite interesting that her hairs are like black wires. A very strange comparison in the 16th century sonnet. Uh, so uh, they are not smooth, they are hard, and wire light. Have seen roses demasked, red and white, demasked roses. And there, is, there is also, it is said that there is some kind of a reference to war of roses that happened in um, 15th century. The two, the wars fought between um, the two royal families, one representing red rose, another representing white rose. Of course, there is uh, also, something about rose as far as love is concerned, I know, white rose and red rose. Uh, but he says he doesn't see such roses, but no such roses see I in her cheeks. Her, her cheeks are not rosy cheeks. They are faded. They are dark. Okay. So uh, there is no such question of talking about my love is like red, red rose, what Burns speaks in his famous poem. And in some perfumes is there more delight? In some perfumes is there more delight than in the breath that from my mistress's reeks. The perfume is far better than the, the breath uh, of uh, his beloved. The warm breath, the scented breath we normally talk about whenever a lover compares uh, his beloved to uh, breathing balm, breathing sand. But here he says, perfume is better, not her breath, not her breath. The last quatrain, I mean, it means third quatrain, he says, I love to hear her speak. And well, I know that music hath a far more pleasing sound. I love to hear, every lover wants to hear his mistress speaking, talking, because every time she speaks, 
It's like a music. Again, I want to quote uh, Robert Burns. My love is like a melody sweetly played in tune. Sweetly played in tune. Love is compared to a melody, a beautiful song. But somehow he doesn't find music in his mistress's verse. I love to hear the, although he wants to hear her, but music is far better than that of her verse. I grant I never saw a goddess girl. Of course, we human beings, we have not seen the goddess going, but we want to see you know, our own people like goddesses. And many lovers compare their beloved mistresses to a goddess. But here, Shakespeare says, my mistress, when she walks, treads on the ground, treads on the ground. That's again, very unusual way of describing a woman walking or a beloved walking. You know, I remember kids' sister words, light food, long hair, you know, but here, it's not a question of light foot because she treads on the ground, treads on the ground. But the end is very interesting. In the end, you know, normally sonnet gives a conclusion. You know, when it comes to couplet, couplet gives a conclusion. And, this, this. and yet by heaven, I think my love as rare as any she believed with false compare. But I love my mistress. I think my love is as rare as any. She believed with false compare. Let's not go with a false compare. Let's not go most of the time with false compare. Let's see the realities. Still I love her. Still I believe her. Still I trust her. Still I like her so much. That's why my love is true love. Again, we remember Shakespeare's sonnet 116. True love is like a marriage of true minds. Love is not at times fool. Love is not, you know, it's tested by time and time. So obviously in this sonnet, we find that in despite of her poor, you know, beauty, physical beauty, the spiritual beauty is important. The beauty of the character is important. In that way, Shakespeare also speaks about the significance of true love. With this, I'm going to stop discussion on sonnet number 130. And thank you very much for patient listening.